Hello guys and welcome to the 8th part of my tutorial on how to create an inventory system for the Blender game engine and let's see what we have done so far okay so far we have created a simple Blender file and uh, what uh, we can do at the moment is that we can pick up objects from the ground and add them to the inventory and this happens by moving the cursor over the object and left clicking on it and furthermore we can press I and so display our inventory where we can see that it holds uh, 30 uh, units uh, of arrows this simple graphic represents uh, the pile of arrows, a stack of arrows and uh, we have created in such a way uh, so that uh, there are uh, inventory slots uh, that can hold uh, more than one uh, uh, copies, uh, more than one units uh, of, uh, of an object. And in our example, uh, we can uh, store up to 30 arrows uh, in an inventory slot. And if we pick up more inventory, more arrows, uh, they will be saved in another slot because we have uh, assigned that uh, uh, 30 will be the maximum quantity an inventory slot uh, may hold uh, as far as it concerns uh, the arrows and furthermore we can pick up other objects like swords and press I we see that the sword is uh, uh, stored in, an in, uh, an in a different in a new inventory slot uh, furthermore what we can do is that uh, we can left click uh, on an object, a weapon, and we can uh, equip our character with this weapon and I have added uh, some uh, simple movement we can move our character uh, uh, forward by pressing the up arrow key and by pressing the space, the space key uh, our character uh, performs a simple animation and this represents uh, uh, the hit animation and uh, I have uh, added this just uh, to give some uh, detail of course uh, when you create your own blender file you will add uh, more uh, detail uh, in these function functions uh, now what we are going to do today uh, today uh, we are going to add another uh, function and this will be uh, dropping items uh, on the ground uh, and what uh, how this is going to work and uh, we are going to pick up some objects from the ground okay let's say we have picked 20 arrows and a sword and uh, we will walk a distance and then we decide that we want uh, to drop a weapon because we don't need it anymore or because we don't have uh, we won't have any uh, any slots uh, left uh, to store other things so we decide to drop this weapon and uh, how this uh, will be accomplished uh, we are going to right click uh, on uh, the object we want to drop and uh, before I go on uh, uh, there is something we have to uh, to do and this has to do with the quantity that is uh, held uh, in a slot uh, remember that uh, remind uh, I have to remind you that uh, in the database that holds uh, the dropped items uh, uh, we have them uh, in this database in the database that holds the dropped items the dropped objects uh, we haven't uh, specified a quantity uh, we uh, where we took the quantity where we take the quantity we take it from uh, the database uh, of the weapons and uh, this uh, will create uh, problems in uh, uh, when running the game and let me show more clearly what uh, what I mean okay we have the three databases this database uh, holds uh, our inventory we can see it here and uh, it has the eight slots uh, 
the, quanti- the type of the object that each lot uh, st- uh, has uh, stored, uh, whether uh, the object is equipped or not, and the quantity uh, of the object. And here uh, in the blend file, the quantity is this number, 20 and 1. And of course, in order not uh, to confuse you, uh, I uh, remind you that this is our initial database. Uh, we don't use this database uh, in the game. Uh, we just uh, use these uh, CSV files uh, we have created. Uh, we use them only to import them in the uh, game. And then we store this information uh, in the dictionary and uh, the database that is updated in our game, uh, it's this dictionary. So when you see these uh, files here, this database, these uh, CSV files, uh, and uh, they are not uh, updated in the game. They are just uh, imported, and we do this for uh, for reasons w- because we want to create to have a file that contains uh, all of our initial objects, and that it will be easy to edit. And uh, because a dictionary is uh, something which is not, uh, it's uh, somehow confusing and complicated. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you will have a database in the form of a spreadsheet. Uh, then we can easily edit and uh, see uh, what uh, the properties of our object are. But these are just the initial properties. They won't be updated uh, inside the game. So to return to what I was saying, we have uh, the inventory uh, initial database and we have this uh, quantity uh, row here, quantity column here, where we store the quantity of uh, the objects uh, our inventory slots hold. Uh, On the other hand, sorry, in our drop titles database uh, we don't have uh, we don't have a column that holds uh, the quantity and we assume that the quantity of a dropped item uh, will be uh, taken from this file the weapons database which contains all the different weapons uh, don't get confused between the dropped items database you see that in the dropped items database uh, there are instances of the same object this W004 uh, represents uh, arrows, but different instances, instances uh, of these arrows. Uh, the weapons database contains only uh, the different IDs of uh, uh, the different weapons uh, that uh, uh, will be met, uh, we will meet uh, and pick up in the game. Uh, so here, uh, in a few words, what information we don't have is the quantity of the dropped uh, item. And what's the problem? The problem is that if I drop, when I write the appropriate uh, code, if I press right click to drop these 20 arrows, and this will cause uh, uh, a new dropped item to be placed uh, in the ground where my character is. But the problem is the next time I'm going to pick up uh, this uh, this dropped item, uh, we will notice that uh, the quantity here will be 10. And why is that? Because my database, my dropped items database, doesn't uh, hold a quantity uh, information, and it will asu- assume that uh, the dropped object will have 10 arrows, will contain uh, 10 arrows. So First of all, we have to fix this, and uh, how are we going to fix it? We will just add a quantity column uh, in uh, our uh, dropped items initial database. So we are going to press zero, and why zero? Uh, I'm going to write a code so. Uh, if it detects a zero quantity in a dropped in a dropped uh, item, it is going to take the quantity from the other database, from the weapons database. 
Okay, so uh, here, sorry, here I have the W304, which is uh, the ID for the arrows, and here is quantity zero. And this does not mean that uh, the dropped item will have quantity zero, will, co uh, will represent zero arrows. Uh, uh, the engine uh, will be coded in that way, that uh, when uh, it uh, tracks, it detects a zero quantity, it's going to take the value from the other database, from the, from the weapons uh, database. Uh, if it does not detect a zero value, here, let's say it detects a 15 value, it is going to add uh, 15 arrows uh, and not 10. So let's save this file and export it to a CSV file. I'm saving it. Good as yes, okay, yes. And Let's go and write some code. And if you are confused, don't worry. Uh, uh, here, while uh, creating and writing code, you will understand many things uh, that uh, I'm going to do. And uh, one difference from uh, the previous parts is that uh, uh, here I'm going to, to use uh, another strategy and I'm not going to write code. I have already created uh, another blend file, and it's this, my tutorial INV1 blend, uh, which contains uh, all the code, all the new code uh, that uh, need to be added. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy and paste uh, parts of this code uh, in my initial blender file in the blender file we had created uh, in the last uh, part in the seventh part so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy and paste uh, parts of the code from the final blender file into this uh, blender file uh, we are going to to create to expand to be more accurate and i'm going to explain uh, what uh, this code does i think this uh, will be less uh, time consuming and uh, if you don't agree you are free to uh, tell me so in the comments area so let's uh, start and we will start from our uh, initial script okay i remind you that uh, the initial script is attached to uh, the camera and uh, it contains an uh, always uh, sensor, but without the, uh, the pulse mode, the positive pulse mode activated. So this means that it will be triggered just once in the beginning of the game. And uh, what we do here is we are assigning uh, the initial variables of the game. And the only thing we are going to change here, and I'm going to my final copy, is that uh, we're going to add a new uh, key to our uh, global dictionary and return to the initial uh, version okay the final version has this green area and so you may separate it uh, just with uh, one look okay when you see this green area this means that this is this is the final blend file and i have done this uh, to be able to separate the two files just by looking uh, in the at the screen so what i did i took from the final uh, uh, from the final blend file i took this line and i'm going to paste it here okay so the only thing that changes here is that we add this line which creates a new key in our global dictionary and this key is named to drop and this uh, this uh, key here will have as a value uh, the id of uh, the weapon uh, that it's going to we are going to drop uh, on the ground and the id 
switch ID, the ID from the database weapons. Okay, so if we want to drop a uh, pack of arrows, this ID will be W304. Okay, let's next we are going to go to the inventory uh, script and remember we have this part here where we check whether uh, the left click uh, is pressed and in this case uh, we use we have written this uh, uh, piece uh, this uh, piece of code uh, that uh, controls uh, the equipment uh, of the character and now we are going to add another uh, piece of code and I'm going to copy it from the finished blender file and it's this part here right so we are adding here this sorry this logic and before I uh, go on I noticed that there is a problem here I have written slot equipped equals to true uh, that is not correct I don't want to uh, change the slot equipped uh, I want to change let me see a minute uh, here yes I want to change this one this is an omission from the previous part okay we want to change the equipped key from the database from the weapons uh, from the inventory database okay remember that here we have an a false uh, state for the equipped uh, for the equipped state uh, of the weapon so we want to change uh, this uh, state to true and this is what uh, this line is going to do it's going to go to our inventory and it's going to search for the key uh, with uh, the hit object uh, name and it's going to change the equipped uh, key to true so uh, change the slot equipped equals to true with inventory string of slot equipped equals true with this line okay sorry my omission and having done this let's go on to see the new code okay so here in this line uh, we detect whether right click button was pressed uh, this key code here 191 uh, represents the right click so we check whether the right click was pressed and whether uh, our mouse cursor uh, is over uh, an object and this means that if I click in s empty area then this uh, uh, code won't be uh, executed afterwards immediately after this line I have uh, placed another if uh, statement and we check whether the object that was hit whether it contains the inventory uh, slot uh, value and what is that okay we have the inventory not inventory slot just slot here okay we have here our inventory screen and we notice that uh, all the slots have uh, a property named slot in order to separate them from other uh, objects in the game for example the texts here they don't have this, proper this property okay so here we detect whether the object that the cursor uh, is over uh, it is uh, a slot and not something else okay since we uh, make sure that uh, the object that we have clicked is a slot then we have uh, the code uh, to uh, to create uh, the code uh, to uh, we execute the code that will uh, uh, subtract uh, the item uh, from uh, the inventory and what we do next uh, we check uh, whether uh, the mesh of the hit object 
is uh, is not equal to the weapon the hero is uh, wielding at the moment. Uh, what does this mean? This means that if uh, I have uh, equipped a weapon, uh, then uh, the hero won't drop it. So you can drop only weapons uh, that are uh, that are not equipped. So here we check uh, whether the weapon is uh, equipped or not. And uh, in case that it is not equipped, then we move on with the code uh, for uh, the drop, uh, the drop of the item. Uh, here we set a variable uh, which gets uh, the hero object. Okay, the hero object is this one here, and I'm going to rename it to hero. Okay, it's here is our main character, we name him hero, and what it does, this uh, line is that uh, it creates uh, a variable that uh, stores the hero object. Uh, notice that here uh, we have added a get scene game, and why do we do this? Uh, because uh, the INV uh, script is attached to the camera in the inventory scene. Okay, you see here, I have selected the, the camera of the inventory scene, and here we see that, that uh, the inventory script is attached uh, to this uh, camera. But uh, the hero is not in the inventory scene. He is in the game scene. So I have to specify that get the hero object, but get it from the game scene. And remember that this get scene is just a function I had created here that gets a string uh, with the name uh, of uh, of the scene and returns and where it is yes and it returns a scene but not as a string but uh, as a kx uh, scene object okay having done this i'm creating a temporary dictionary and the dictionary will uh, store in its keys uh, all the information for uh, the new uh, object that will be dropped and uh, this information is uh, the coordinates uh, of uh, the dropped item and the coordinates are where our hero is so the x coordinate it will be uh, the x position of our hero uh, the y coordinate will be the y coordinate of our hero position and the z coordinate it will be the uh, z position of uh, our hero okay and this will cause the new object to be created here in the center of uh, uh, of uh, the gamer and we could uh, 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 we could uh, write here let's say minus one to make it uh, create to make it to make it appear a little uh, lower because here you see that uh, the center of our hero is uh, above the ground so i could write here minus one and you have to check uh, whether this value is uh, correct uh, if you see here that is 1.3 meters above the ground and uh, you have to make some uh, tests in order to uh, to make it uh, appear to make uh, the dropped object appear on the ground so but for now i'm going to leave it uh, appear here uh, at the center of uh, the hero object uh, the other uh, the other information the other key uh, uh, another key we need is the object uh, the id object uh, of uh, the weapon that will be dropped and let's see our database is here you see that the id object is the w001324 and this id object corresponds to the database weapons ID and 
for this key I'm giving uh, the name of the mesh of the inventory slot and I remind you that uh, this mesh here uh, whenever you store an item it changes to the mesh of uh, the uh, of the item you have stored okay and let's see it in practice PSP okay if I tap this you see that the slot changes to another mesh and this mesh is the w 0001 mesh and where do we take this mesh we take it from the where from the slot icons a uh, blender file which remember uh, has all the slot icons uh, stored and we import this file into our tutorial inventory file and we import uh, the meshes as well so if I open this just to remind you and remember that we have stored the icons in the second slot okay you see that this here has the w0004 uh, mesh name so this name will be stored in the ID object uh, key another value we are going to add is the active uh, yeah, it's the active state and let's go back here okay remember that we have an active state and this means that uh, whenever you pick up you pick up uh, dropped items and you leave the scene and you return to the scene uh, you don't want this uh, dropped item to reappear because you have already pick picked it up so by changing uh, this uh, state here from true to false uh, you specify that uh, uh, you don't want the engine to uh, to, reap to recreate uh, this dropped item the next time uh, you will load uh, this scene uh, okay you could uh, as well just delete uh, this uh, line okay not this line in this file you could delete uh, the key in your dictionary the d304 key but uh, I selected I opted not to delete uh, the keys from uh, my dropped items database just to change this value to false because you may need to uh, you may need it later you may need to check whether the hero has uh, picked uh, picked up uh, an item and you can check it by checking whether this value is true or false uh, there are many uh, ways you can do this you could just delete this uh, d 4 key but I chose to add this column here and change the value from true to false uh, either way uh, would be working but for now we'll stick with the true for false method and next another key we're going to add to our temporary dictionary is uh, the quantity that will be held and remember we have created a new uh, a new column to hold uh, the quantity information and uh, this quantity will be taken from the inventory uh, database okay here we will have quantities like 20 30 15 10 depending on how many items how many units of an item an inventory slot holds so we will have 10 20 30 and this value will be copied to our temporary dictionary and it will be assigned to the quantity key okay so now we have all the information uh, needed uh, in our dropped items uh, database we have the coordinates we have the id of the object that we dropped uh, the state the true state the quantity and what we are left is the main key uh, for uh, the dropped item and uh, what we need to do is that we are going to create uh, a new key and this key will be the d308 so we have to uh, make uh, the engine uh, understand which will be the next uh, number okay we want here the d308 so what I did here is that 
uh, I have written these three lines that uh, the final result will be this string that uh, will store the D three zeros and uh, eight uh, string that will be used uh, as uh, a key uh, for my uh, dictionary for my dropped items dictionary and how did this okay you can see that the string is uh, consists of the letter D okay all uh, of our dropped items start with a D letter and then uh, we need uh, to add the zeros okay the zeros here for the first uh, nine objects will be will have three zeros D zero zero eight D zero zero nine but here we're going to have only two zeros so we are going to have to somehow uh, calculate how many zeros uh, we are going to add to our string because remember this is a string it's not a number so we are going to have to find a way to add uh, the number of the zeros and then we are going to add uh, the actual uh, increasing uh, number uh, of uh, the dropped item so let's see how we are going to do this first of all uh, we need to specify uh, the length of our dropped items database and here in the database you see that it has one two three four five six seven uh, keys so the length will be seven and we are going to add one more unit because we want to create the eighth uh, element of our cap database so here we have the D and we have the eight from here all we have to do is to specify how many zeros we are going to add uh, in the middle and we do this by creating this uh, variable here and then what I'm writing here is an, uh, an inline if statement and I say I want the zeros to be 4 and why 4 because 4 is the number of the digits uh, after the D 1 2 3 4 4 digits okay 3 zeros plus the 1 we have 4 digits uh, right uh, uh, after the D uh, letter so I say uh, I write uh, zero num will be four minus the length of uh, the number uh, of the string of the number value okay remember that this number here in our example will be eight okay I convert eight to a string and then I'm searching for the length of the string eight consists of only one character so this here will take the value one so the number of the zeros will be four minus one equals three and if you check here we have three zeros in the middle plus the eight we are going to add but uh, when uh, do i want this to happen i want this to happen if four minus uh, the length uh, of the string of the num value is uh, greater or equal to zero and this uh, here uh, creates a condition and uh, why because here uh, the database of the draw items as I have created it can store uh, up until uh, about uh, 10,000 uh, objects because here we have uh, four digits so it can go from number one to number 9,999 so I can store 9,999 uh, dropped uh, items and make sure that uh, you use a larger number than this because uh, you will have a problem here uh, if uh, uh, you have uh, created more than uh, uh, 10,000 uh, uh, codes, ID codes uh, for your dropped items because here I check uh, uh, whether uh, 
is will be greater or equal uh, from zero the number of uh, the zeros and so here we create our string and it has d plus the number of the zeros as calculated from here which is 4 minus the length of the string of the num value and we add uh, when you uh, multiply a string with a number then this, this string will be repeated uh, zero num times so here 4 min minus 1 uh, as uh, we calculated this uh, here uh, will give us three zeros so uh, in a few words what I created here is the D008 string so I go back to my drops uh, glib dictionary and I say that the drops string and remember that string is uh, now D308 uh, equals to temp dictionary and the temp dictionary has uh, all this information stored so I uh, update my uh, drops uh, dictionary uh, with uh, the new dropped item and uh, I update furthermore I update the to drop uh, the to drop uh, key uh, with uh, the string and I remember that this global dictionary uh, key we had added it here okay in the beginning of uh, the tutorial we had created this global dictionary uh, key and here we change its value to uh, to the key to the string and uh, furthermore what I have to do is I have to uh, again uh, to uh, update uh, my inventory dictionary and the change will be that the new slot uh, will be empty uh, that the slot that uh, held the object will become empty its quantity will become zero and we are going to replace the mesh with the empty empty mesh and that's all for the inventory uh, script uh, next uh, what uh, I'm going to change is I'm taking uh, all the scripts one by one and I'm adding code whether whenever it is needed in the initial inventory uh, script uh, we don't need to make any change so I'm going to the main script and here what we have is uh, we have to make a small change here uh, here we have uh, uh, we have assigned two variables q which holds the quantity uh, of uh, the dropped uh, item uh, whenever we pick an uh, object from the ground remember that this line here controls whether we have clicked we have left clicked over uh, an object and this object is pickable and pickable are all uh, the dropped items uh, on the ground and we uh, assign uh, this variable to hold uh, the quantity but where does it take this information it takes this information from uh, from the weapons database but uh, remember that uh, we have changed uh, the origin of uh, the quantity information and now uh, this origin uh, is the dropped items uh, database so I'm going to have I'm uh, going to uh, change uh, the origin in my code as well and specify that uh, we need uh, to take this information uh, from uh, the DB uh, d from the dropped items database and not the weapon databases the weapon database but uh, there are cases that we want uh, this information to be uh, originated from uh, the weapons database and uh, which is uh, this uh, case this case is uh, whenever uh, my dropped items database contain uh, has zero value in the quantity uh, in this case uh, the engine uh, is going to seek for the quantity uh, in the in the weapons uh, database 
here this quantity and why I have done this because uh, whenever when you create this database you may not want uh, to add uh, a quantity for uh, each line for each dropped item you may want to leave this zero and uh, let uh, uh, the engine search uh, the database wait response to specify uh, the quantity of the dropped item so I'm going to my final uh, to my final blend file and I'm going to copy and paste the code okay and here let's make it here and delete the old line so okay I'm replacing this line here q is equal to the quantity from the uh, weapons database with this one this part this piece of code and what is that what uh, this does and uh, it uh, checks uh, whether uh, the quantity uh, in the drops dropped items database drops okay remember this is a dropped items database uh, whether the quantity in the dropped items database is greater than zero okay in this case it assigns uh, the quantity uh, as uh, the quantity in the dropped items database but if the quantity in the dropped items database is not is uh, not great uh, greater than zero uh, it is going to uh, take this value from the weapons database okay I repeat First we check whether this quantity whether this quantity uh, is uh, greater than zero and we assign uh, this quantity uh, in the Q variable. If uh, this quantity is zero then uh, we are going to take uh, the value from the weapons database. So we have uh, Having done this uh, change, uh, we may uh, move on, and we are going to go to the spawn dropped items uh, script. And here, remember that it was attached uh, to this empty, which is uh, the spawn point for all the dropped items. And I'm going to rename it to spawn dropped items init. And why I'm doing this? Because I'm going to create a new a new script, and I'm going to name it Spawn Dropped Items. That was the name uh, that the initial script had before. So I added this in it because I'm creating this new uh, uh, here this new uh, script, which will be attached again and uh, in the spawn uh, spawn object uh, in the spawn point object and, and let's see okay so I'm adding an always sensor and this script will be executed uh, uh, in every in each uh, game cycle I'm adding a Python controller and name drops items connect this and furthermore I'm going to need this spawn uh, actuator and again I'm going just to copy and paste the code from here paste it here And let's see what uh, this script does. Okay, we import. Okay, I'm not going to explain this. We are doing. We have written this in almost every script uh, here in this tutorial. Okay, here I assign uh, the spawn actuator to the spawn variable. And 
furthermore I uh, I have assigned another variable which uh, has the GD to drop uh, item and remember in the inventory in the string we have uh, assigned uh, we have uh, given the value string to GD to drop so it will contain the, the string the ID of the dropped uh, item that is going to be created okay so if to drop is not nothing and remember where when it is nothing here in the beginning of the game it's nothing but whenever we drop we press right click in the inventory and we drop an item the nothing value uh, is uh, replaced by the string value so in this case our code will be executed and what it's going to do uh, first of all it's going to change the position uh, of uh, uh, the spawn point and this position where do we take the information for the position from the dropped items database here we have x y and z x y and z okay here we have x y and z and uh, uh, which object we are going to spawn okay from the dropped items from the dropped item database to drop id objects remember that to drop value here holds uh, the code the main key for the dropped item so here we're going to have something like uh, dropped items to drop we have we were going to have something like d0004 or 5 or 6 and next the id of the object that uh, uh, corresponds to uh, this uh, to the main key okay so if we, if we have d306 here if we have here d306 then this id object the corresponding id object will be w304 so the engine knows that the object that is going to be spawned will be the w304 and where is it going to place it here in this position and which position is this the x y and z from here then we uh, make the new dropped item appear with this line with an object and remember that we add a pickable uh, value uh, which uh, all of our dropped items uh, have remember here in the init okay that we uh, have created this pickable uh, property because uh, we want uh, our uh, dropped items uh, to be identified by this uh, variable and we give it the value of uh, the to drop uh, uh, variable and uh, rem okay remember this value is the d300456 or whatever then we change the to drop uh, value in the key of uh, to drop in the global database to nothing because we have dropped the item so we have to change the value again to nothing and uh, this line here we don't need it and these are all the changes you have to make and I'm going to review them okay so let's see before I review uh, the code we have added today let's see uh, if it works because I probably have made another mistake I keep making mistakes all the time whenever I write code so let's see if it works as it supposed okay we have picked these items and press right click to drop one and nothing happens and let's check our console sorry here we have drops is not defined in the inventory file ft so copy and okay so 
here we have to assign the drops okay let me save before we proceed Shift T Shift Tab Shift Tab Shift Tab and then press right click and okay you see it works you see that the item was dropped and if I press if I equip uh, the bow here and press right click okay you see that we can't drop it because uh, our hero has it equipped but if I press right click here okay you see that it drops on the ground and I can uh, pick this object again okay you see that they reappear in my inventory and let's see uh, the quantity the thing we have created the reason why we created uh, here uh, this uh, row this column here okay if I press P and I pick up this <coughs> this packs this uh, uh, packs uh, of arrows i have here 30 arrows and five and remember that one of them has quantity 15 instead of 10 which is uh, the default value so here i have 30 and 5 now if if i hadn't done this if i had dropped this here and i try to pick it up then the engine had uh, no way to know that uh, this represents 30 arrows and not 10 but now if I pick it up okay you see that it's 30 here and the same with this if I drop it here uh, here it knows that there are five arrows and not 10 which is the default value uh, taken uh, from the weapons uh, database okay you see here that 10 is the default quantity but I have stored this value here the 5 value and if I pick it up again and press I okay you see that this is 5 and not 10 and that's the reason why I made uh, all these changes uh, in the database and here uh, in my script where is it in uh, the main yes and this change here to be able to control uh, the quantity to check the quantity of the items that is picked and dropped and uh, that's uh, all for now okay let's see it again we pick up objects we equip these objects we cannot drop equipped objects but we can drop uh, objects that are not equipped and furthermore we can pick up again uh, these objects and we can pick up objects that are represented that are that represent uh, more than one units uh, of an object here we have 13 and 15 we can drop these objects as well and we can repick them and the engine remembers the exactly the exact quantity of uh, the dropped items and that is what <laughs> we did uh, today and let me review again all the changes that we uh, did okay in the initial uh, file that is executed in the beginning of the game we assigned this uh, key in our global database uh, in our global dictionary okay that holds the uh, item that uh, will be dropped uh, whenever uh, you right click and uh, this value will take uh, the ID uh, of uh, the dropped object it will take values from D001 to D0 D999 D49s and uh, next we made a change here because it was an omission uh, I made uh, from the previous uh, part uh, we just uh, changed this line to this what you see it doesn't ha it didn't have to do with uh, the current tutorial it is an omission from the previous tutorial 
and uh, what we did uh, uh, add was this part here of code and what it does uh, it checks whether the right click button was pressed whether uh, the cursor was uh, above an object whether this object is a slot an inventory slot then it checks whether uh, the uh, whether the object that was hit whether its mesh name is not the same with the uh, weapon that is already equipped uh, with the weapon that the character has already uh, equipped and we want this because we don't want uh, uh, the equipped items to be able to be dropped of course you can change that uh, but you need to write some more code uh, I chose uh, not uh, to uh, allow the player to be able to drop equipped items then we assign a value here that takes uh, the hero object and the hero object is this one here which is in the game uh, scene but uh, this script here the inventory script is executed from another scene from the inventory uh, scene so I specify that this object is in the game scene and its name is hero and I store it in the hero variable and then uh, we create a temporary dictionary which will contain uh, all uh, the new information that will be added uh, in the new uh, dropped item uh, key which is the x, y, z, id, obj, active and quantity uh, values and then we create uh, the string of the new key, the d308 key with these three lines first we specify uh, the final part of uh, the code which is the 8 okay, by calculating the length of the database and adding 1 then uh, we specify the number of uh, the zeros uh, that uh, will be uh, between uh, the D letter and the number with this line here and then we uh, create our string by uh, by entering uh, the, the D letter, uh, the number of uh, the middle zeros, and the uh, number uh, of uh, uh, the ID code, the the number of uh, the ID code of the dropped item. And then we uh, create uh, the corresponding key in our dropped items database and we give as a value uh, the temporary dictionary which is uh, all uh, these values here uh, all these keys and their values that we are stored in the temporary dictionary then uh, we change uh, the state uh, of uh, the to drop uh, key and it contains this string the d308 string which is the next string in our database and then we update our inventor database by changing by changing these uh, values id object to empty equipped to false and quantity to zero and i don't change equipped to false because here i have uh, uh, i have prohibited uh, my code to go on if there is an equipped uh, weapon so I don't have to uh, to make a change in the value because I have already made certain that uh, the value will be uh, that this value here uh, will be false so I change the rest of the values empty for the id obj, zero for the quantity and I change the mesh uh, of uh, the inventory slot again to empty so let's see how this works okay i press this one press i now if i press right click okay you see that the mesh is replaced uh, with empty okay i haven't changed this value of the text here to zero but 
I think it is easy for you to do it if you had uh, watched the previous tutorial which uh, updates the inventory values whenever the inventory is uh, loaded so it is easy for you to uh, create another update whenever you press right click to update uh, this uh, quantity here so I'm, the I'm leaving this uh, as an exercise uh, to you and uh, we are done uh, with the inventory uh, uh, script what it does it could just create uh, the new key and its values in the dropped items uh, script it changes uh, the to drop uh, value to drop key where it changes the value of the to drop key uh, to the string uh, value and it updates the inventory database and uh, with uh, new information and it says that this slot will be empty it will hold no quantity and we change uh, the mesh we replace the mesh of the inventory slot with the empty mesh so here in the state we have not uh, we do not uh, create something on the ground we just update our databases and this will happen here uh, in the spawn drop items text which is a new text a new script remember that I remind you that we in the previous uh, in the beginning of uh, uh, the tutorial uh, this spawn drop items init script was named a spawn dropped items without the init so I added an init uh, here and an an init suffix here and I created a new script spawn dropped items which is attached uh, in the uh, uh, spawn point object uh, with an always uh, sensor with uh, positive pulse uh, enabled and it has uh, it is uh, also attached to the spawn actuator that will actually spawn the dropped items so all the spawning uh, happens here in the script and what it does it checks whether the uh, to drop key has a value other than nothing okay so in the inventory script we change uh, the, uh, the value of to drop into a string into the ID of uh, the object that it's going to be dropped so it checks whether this is uh, not nothing and then it uh, uh, places uh, the drop point in the coordinates of uh, the dropped item and then it, uh, it specifies which object will be dropped all this information will be taken from here from the new line that we will create the D308 so it takes the coordinates it takes the or the ID of uh, the object that is going to be dropped uh, we create uh, we spawn this object and uh, furthermore we assign a new property to it a pickable property to make it uh, be identified as a pickable object and we give uh, this value the to drop the value of the to drop uh, variable which is the d308 and then we change the gd to drop uh, key into nothing again and uh, another change we made here has to do with a quantity here in the main uh, in the main uh, script because as we said we need uh, we need the dropped object to remain to retain uh, quantity uh, information uh, for the dropped items here is 30 we press right click and we tick again and we see that it's 30 again so uh, the info was uh, held in the dropped item and it was uh, restored whenever we picked uh, the object had we not done uh, this change uh, this value would be 10 so we would drop 30 arrows and we would pick 10 arrows and uh, this would not be correct and here is the part of the code that checks this uh, it checks whether this value here is larger than 0 and if it is larger than 0 uh, it uh, stores uh, in the queue 
uh, here in the queue uh, variable it stores uh, the quantity value uh, from here okay in this case it would store the 15 because it's greater uh, than zero otherwise if value is zero as it happens here it would not uh, store zero as a value but it would take the value from the weapons uh, database which is 10 and that's uh, all for now uh, we have all uh, we have uh, our inventory system uh, complete of course it is not perfect it has a lot of flaws but just uh, think that it took me uh, eight tutorials to create uh, this uh, uh, inventory system and remember that uh, uh, more some of these tutorials were more than uh, an hour long so uh, there are uh, mistakes omissions and flaws but uh, I hope that uh, this uh, will help you uh, understand uh, the logic uh, to create uh, something similar and uh, if you feel uncertain copy the code as you see it and then make changes to see uh, how they affect uh, uh, the game and uh, uh, given time uh, you will come to understand how this uh, uh, script uh, work and uh, furthermore I'm going to create uh, uh, another part because uh, we have created uh, a database a global dictionary that contains all the information of our game but each time uh, we uh, play the game everything is reset uh, to the beginning and uh, what we need it is a save and load uh, routine and uh, blender uh, having if you uh, save all the information of your game in the global dictionary uh, blender gives you a function uh, uh, and built-in function that uh, saves this uh, dictionary in the hard disk so you may be able to resume it uh, at any time uh, whether you are loading a new scene or whether uh, you are loading a game uh, but uh, we will see this uh, in the next and final part uh, of this tutorial uh, again uh, I uh, I recommend that uh, uh, if you have uh, any questions or you want to suggest something or if you have noticed that I have done something wrong I'm sure that uh, I have done something wrong or I have omitted something uh, you are free and I urge you to uh, comment uh, whenever you find something that you don't understand or that you believe that it is uh, wrong made or it is not made in an effective way so you are free to propose uh, whatever you want I repeat again that uh, my target my purpose is to spread knowledge and uh, I hope that this tutorial uh, was uh, uh, informative uh, for you and that you learned things and uh, for now uh, I'm going to stop uh, thank you again for watching and uh, listening uh, to what I have to say what I had to say and uh, have fun and keep uh, blending and we will see uh, we'll uh, I'll see you again uh, in the next and final part uh, of uh, this tutorial and thank you very much